Welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the past week. The first half of this show is basically the AMD News Show, and we have a couple of big items, including AMD working on DDR5 memory and near memory. This is a GN exclusive story, and we'll have more of those later. And a couple of other things, following up on the RX 500X series of video cards, the uh, AMD veteran Chris Hook leaving AMD, and then we have non-AMD news about FutureMark uh, microcode patches and the difficulties of modern fabrication process. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's new Dark Core RGB SE mouse. The Dark Core RGB SE is a wireless gaming mouse rated for up to 24 hours of continuous wireless gaming with the LEDs enabled and can be coupled with a Qi charging mouse pad for easy battery charging. So it has both wireless and Bluetooth antenna, so the mouse can be used easily on two systems and switched between them. Learn more at the link in the description below. So prior to the news items for the week, a quick update on the mod mats. We've shipped most of them for this round. Thank you to all of you who have purchased some. And that includes a couple of our friends in the media and reviewers on YouTube who've received a few. I think Joker was probably the first one to put a tweet out that he was using it. So thank you, Joker, for trying it out. Of course, given the current trends in the industry, we did actually pre-overclock the mats and make sure that they could reach our specification of 5.2 gigahertz before sending them out. So uh, the reviewers do have higher overclocking mats, but the rest of them are still perfectly good work services. So if you haven't checked it out, go to store.gamersnexus.net, give a look at the new mod mat. We have a matte black background now, by which I mean it's literally a black colored mat <laughs> and uh, super grippy as a result. We're very happy with this production run and we're still uh, improving as we go. So yeah, we still have a few mats left from the existing round. You can get those orders in now if you want one. They are shipping as they come in. Uh, but we do have another order coming in straight after that. It'll be a bit of a delay. If you put your orders in now, though, you should get one before the current round sold out. First major news item, AMD working on DDR5 memory and what we understand is called near memory. So this is a bit of a GN exclusive item. Uh, we got tipped recently by a highly credible source that we've confirmed works at one of the major memory suppliers. Uh, so we've got several stories we can write here, but we're going to start with this one. Our present understanding is that AMD is working with at least one memory supplier to establish an R&D lab at AMD's Austin campus. And this lab's entire purpose is to research DDR5 and develop DDR5 uh, for the next generation of system memory. AMD is trying to be Intel to the market with this one. And although that's not necessarily news, competitors always trying to beat each other, this is serious. AMD really wants to be first with DDR5 from what we understand. So uh, they've also been the first with several other memory standards. They're now a, a consumed ATI company that they bought, uh, was the first with several standards for GDDR or video memory. Uh, so this looks real. DDR5 is what they're working on now. And separately, we also learned that AMD is working on what they call near memory or HBM being used in conjunction with future CPU components. So we're not clear presently on whether that includes desktop CPUs in the immediate future, but we do know that AMD is working on R&D for HBM for CPUs, not just GPUs, and that's actively being developed. So uh, given Hades Canyon, that's not necessarily a big surprise, but the fact that it's coming to AMD processors is noteworthy for sure. And I would assume at some point you see that in some level of, in the very least, a high-end mobile processor, if not desktop components. The, the latter would come much later because it does make a lot of sense in, uh, in mobile processing devices. Again, look at Hades Canyon. The next news item, again, an AMD item. AMD veteran Chris Hook has left AMD after 17 years working there. Hook's role at AMD was within the Radeon Technology Group, previously was at ATI, and within RTG, he served as the Senior Director of Global Product Marketing, and Hook is headed to a new presently undisclosed position outside of AMD at the end of April. AMD already announced a replacement for Chris Hook, and this news comes not long after Raja Kadori left Radeon Technologies Group and went over to Intel. Raja and Chris Hook have worked together for a long time. It's possible that Chris Hook goes over to Intel. That's what a lot of the rumors have stated, but there's not really anything to confirm that right now. Certainly some kind of major vendor, Qualcomm, Intel, one of those is the most likely. Uh, Chris Hook also, if you're not aware, was responsible for a lot of the AMD marketing strategies. He was responsible for organizing a lot of the press technical events and things like that, uh, press events off-site to learn about new products, and is moving over to 
uh, some other company now. So uh, also was behind a lot of the PR opportunities and story opportunities as well. So uh, Chris Hook definitely played a big role in the perception of AMD in the industry, and we'll see how his replacement follows up on that. Next one, RX 500X series. So this is more boring than previously thought, as if that were possible. If you thought the RX 500X news from last week was boring, I've got something better for you. This one is uh, basically, we thought that the RX 500X series, which was posted accidentally by AMD early, would be a pre-pre-overclock of Polaris, like the RX 500 series was. In actuality, it's an OEM rebrand of the RX 500 series with no pre-overclock or pre-pre-overclock in this case. So the only change is the 500, uh, 550X. The other 500X cards, no changes at all from what we've seen thus far. Clock speeds are the same, specs are the same, everything's the same. There's just OEM rebrands. 550X has a, a skew that's slightly faster, but that's it. So yeah, that was uh, much more boring than expected. Next one, industry challenges with seven nanometer and five nanometer process for fabrication. So the timelines for shrinking process nodes and the evolution of semiconductor manufacturing may be reaching new challenges. They're a bit in question now if they weren't already. And this is given troubles specifically that Intel and AMD have already had. Intel's been struggling for quite a while now to get 10 nanometer working the way they want. A report out of EE Times echoes the sentiment that there doesn't seem to be a magic bullet for the ills of manufacturing at 5 nanometer and 7 nanometer with EUV lithography. Random defects are popping up in the form of imperfect holes, tears and lines, shorts where holes or lines meet, and worse yet, it allegedly takes days to find these anomalies and imperfections on silicon this small. This makes defects and yield a chief concern at 5 nanometers and 7 nanometers. Foundry processes and company roadmaps targeting 2020 with optical shrinks could be out of the window now. Next up, Futuremark recently announced that they will further integrate with UL or Underwriters Laboratories, citing their merger in 2014. On April 23rd, 2018, Futuremark will become UL Benchmarks. Additionally, all social media accounts will be rebranded and their website will be relocated to benchmarks.ul.com. Aside from the looks, Futuremark assures everything else will remain the same. Benchmark brands such as 3DMark, PCMark, etc., purchased benchmarks and benchmark scores will all remain the same and will continue to receive support. AMD processors also just received a Windows patch aimed at mitigating the Spectre Variant 2 vulnerability at the operating system level. This is following several Intel patches which have had somewhat murky launches. They've been issued and recalled and things like that. AMD is just pushing some of theirs now though. Uh, AMD has published microcode updates for their processors dating back to 2011, and that starts with the first line of bulldozer-based CPUs. Specifically, the OS level fix takes the form of, let me read it here, KB4093112, and centers around indirect branch prediction barriers in AMD chips. AMD has also released a white paper citing their Spectre efforts and detailing what they're doing to mitigate and hopefully uh, deal with all of those vulnerability exploits and concerns. In laptop news, Asus is preparing to trot out three new laptops, speculatively aimed at the eSports crowd. These include the ROG Strix GL503, GL703, and Tough Gaming FX504. These models offer two different CPU configurations, an i5-8300H or i7-8750H. All models pair the Intel Coffee Lake CPU with either a 1050 or 1050 Ti. Both the Tough Gaming FX504 and ROG Strix GL503 offer a 120Hz TN display. The GL703 offers a 60Hz IPS display, and all displays are 1080p. Different storage and memory options, of course, are available for all models. No word on pricing or availability as of now. The last major news item is on Corsair's release of a new high-end Dominator Platinum series. The previous one was the Dominator Platinum SE Torque, and the new one is the Special Edition Contrast. The DDR4 modules feature basically recognizable Dominator heat spreaders, and this time they've got some black and white aesthetic going on, worthy of the contrast namesake. It's, it's creative. They're working on it. Regardless, the 32 gigabyte kits are based on Samsung's BDI ICs, something that everyone should be paying attention to right now, and only come in 32 gigabyte capacities in both dual and quad channel configurations. Out of the box, the kit runs a DDR4-3466 frequency with XMP on, 
with timings, major timings configured to 16, 18, 1836. And of course there's a new kit, if you're wondering, priced at $440 for two by 16 gigabytes or 480 for four by eight gigabytes. That's it for the major news items for the week. As always, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of these mod mats and our Ryzen 2000 series coming up this week. So absolutely subscribe so you can catch that. We have a lot of Ryzen 2000 content. You're going to want to see it, including, well, I can't reveal it, but it'll be good. So check back soon. I'll see you all next time. The last major nudes, nudes, nudes item. <laughs>